Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Rosmo, and we have a new movie for today. This was suggested to me by Live Horses Dream, and that movie is Leap, or Ballerina. Apparently, it has two names. So it took me this long to actually get to a review because I have mixed emotions with this movie. But if you're looking for a ghost signal to watch this movie, I'll be that signal. Watch it. As much as I have a bunch of things to say about this, I really liked it. And this video has spoilers. So if you want to watch it spoiler free, then go watch the movie. It's great. So before I discuss what I liked and disliked about the movie, let's do a recap. Leap is about this girl named Felice, who came from an orphanage. She dreamed to dance, and her friend Victor, not Wolf, <coughs> whose dream is to be an inventor. They both escaped the orphanage using Victor's stupid chicken wings, not knowing chickens can fly, and killed one to prove how wrong he is. As you can see, I don't like Victor, but we'll get to that. There's also this cute scene where Victor holds Felice's treasure while she sleeps on his shoulder. You know what, I'll give him a best boy point for that. They arrive at Paris, get separated, and Felice enters a ballet place and gets to see a professional ballerina while in her rehearsals. Then the janitor kicks her out for accusing her of stealing, what a jackass, and then was saved by Best Girl. Felice stalks Best Girl and then boom, she kills her. Just kidding. Felice keeps following Best Girl, whose name is Odette, who's voice acted by Carly Rae Jepsen. Bruh. Anyway, we find out she's a cleaning lady for this woman named Regine Lao. This is how it's spelled. We got another Regine villain, everyone. When will the reign of Regines end? Who knows? I'm not complaining. Felice helps Odette with cleaning so she can have a place to stay. So Odette agrees with child labor. Felice meets Regine's daughter Camilla O. Oh, she's snobby and throws Felice's treasure out the window. She runs down to get it and then meets the mailman who delivers a letter invitation to the ballet school for Camille and decides not to give Camille the letter. The best choice she ever made. And entered the school pretending to be Camille. The mailman only has one line but he's my favorite out of everyone here by the way. Just, just, just listen. <sighs> Oh, how rude! Children today have no manners. There you see how oblivious to ballet Felice is, and we meet Louis Morant, a ballet master and choreographer. He's there to pick a dancer who will dance with this girl in the upcoming Nutcracker. And like, this man has no cap, telling Felice that she will be the first to leave the dance class. She meets up with Victor, and then we see Victor being an unsupportive friend. Then we meet Rudy. I don't care about him. Odette finds out what she'd done and gets mad because what Felice did could end up Odette fired. But she kept Felice's secret and taught her to dance because she's just that amazing. Felice gets better and manages to stay in the dance class auditions. Rudolph notices this and spends time with Felice, brings Felice to the roof and sweeps her off her feet. Good thing she has plot armor though. After that, she meets up with Victor who's being jealous when Felice talks about Rudolph, which isn't cute, it's just annoying because we know where this is going to take us later. Victor shows the currently being worked on statue of... Statue of Puberty. Which I, I thought was a really fun part, so... Odette continues to train Felice to be better, and she does get better. Victor brings Felice out to party and brings her to a bar. Felice dances in the bar, getting everyone's attention, and also falling down the table where Louis was sitting. But she didn't get in trouble, so yay. Victor walks Felice home, does something awkward that makes me want to just erase him from existence, and then screams this in front of the apartment. Good night, Felice. Oh, sorry. Mademoiselle Camille Leo. <laughs> Which Regine overheard, so way to freaking go, Victor. Regine and Camille go to tell the dance school, and Best Boy fixes the problem by having Felice stay and Camille join mid auditions. And I would like to point out this one part where Regine threatens to sack Odette, and then Louis jumps in and exclaims that if you sack Odette, I will sack Camille. But I want to be clear if you sack Madame Odette, I will sack Camille. I like how that sounds, it sounds so threatening. I'm gonna sack you. Wait, Felice watches Odette clean on stage and Louis tells Felice Not just a good dancer, the best of her generation, until an accident took that away. So now Camille and Felice are left to fight for the auditions. At this point, Felice suddenly had a drop of confidence out of nowhere and Rudolph swoops in to tell her that she's great and asks her on a date tonight. And so did Victor, but he couldn't accept the no so he just assumed that Felice said yes. Amazing, isn't he? So that evening, Odette tells Felice to practice, but Felice wants to go on that date and prioritize Rudolph's empty compliments instead of listening to her teacher who knows what's best for her in order for her to achieve her dream. <sighs> I hate this part so much, it's so dumb. Felice goes on to the date on the Eiffel Tower. 
meets Victor there, the boys fight, Felici leaves because the boys are dumb, she felt guilty to go back home so she slept on a roof. Yeah, got late to the auditions and didn't practice or get proper sleep so she loses, to the dismay of Louis. She lost so she's out of the dance school, as of Louis's rules, and she went back to the orphanage, which felt very heartbreaking for Odette, not Felici. There Felici lost confidence but still has that dancing spirit in her, and the guy in the orphanage saw how Felici is able to get a grasp on her dream and brought her back there. This guy is also best boy. And also sounds like Eggman. I don't know what to do with that information. She apologizes to Odette and continued to live with her. Felici also goes back to Victor's workshop to apologize, and this, along with the other one at the start, were the only scenes where I liked Victor. There they watch Camille fail to dance with emotion during rehearsals, and there they have a dance-off, and the other students go nuts. Louis and Odette watch them like proud parents, and there Camille realizes that Felici was better, admits that to Louis, Louis commends her for her honesty and humility, and now Felici gets the part in The Nutcracker. Regine couldn't accept her daughter being replaced, so she goes to Felici, knocks Victor out, finally, thank you Regine, thank you so much, and tries to kill Felici. Really weird scenario, I know, but I like her lines in this part though. Oh, wish, baby, leave it to mama. Paris will love my daughter! Victor saves her with his upgraded chicken wings, which he calls pigeon wings, and she makes it. Dances to the Nutcracker, which ironically is a song that isn't the Nutcracker. Victor watches her with pride. Louis and Odette watch like proud parents again. And Louis gives her a kiss because we all wanted that to happen, let's be honest. Ooh, that was long. Now, for what I think of this movie. The animation was beautiful. The landscapes, the character designs, I just adore it. And they make the dances look so beautiful. I know ballet is an expression of art using the body and this movie makes you see how people who appreciate ballet see it in their eyes. It's beautiful, it's mesmerizing. The music was all over the place. They play pop music at the start which makes it feel like it should be at the end because it sounds so victorious and it would have been great if they played orchestral music or string instruments during the dance-off and as the dance intensifies, the string intensifies and percussions are added and it would have made me shed tears if they actually played the Nutcracker at the end because the Nutcracker is beautiful and they could beautifully close the whole movie well. Before we dive in my opinions about the story, let's talk about the characters and the voices while we're at it. I like Felici's character, perfect for this kind of movie, nothing really new. Her voice though caught me off guard for the first half of the movie because it felt so low and mature for a 12 year old or a teenage, a young adult, it's just weird. Especially compared to Odette's voice which was higher and softer. Also I don't like the reason why she turned against Odette in the conflict, it felt very out of character, it's just, it's just weird. Victor, you guys know I love my awkward boys but he's, I get he's supposed to be funny and silly but it just comes off as annoying. Look, I love Naked Brothers Ben, but Nate Wolf, <laughs> I just gotta ask you to shut up, I'm sorry, it's just nothing personal. Though with these two scenes, I like him there. He's better in those scenes. Coincidentally, he doesn't talk there as much. Rudolph, throw him out. You can make a better story without him. Though I feel like Rudolph was a missed potential for conflict, because they could have made a conflict between the rich and poor as it was slightly hinted in the Eiffel Tower scene. But that didn't lead to much aside from this one-liner. Oh, no! Oh, beggars! Oh, Paris is infested with beggars! Yuck! Odette is best girl. Her story is interesting and she's strict but kind. She's soft-spoken but every time she speaks, she just drags you into focus on what she's saying. Carly did a great job of voicing her. I could listen to her talk like for an hour and I wouldn't mind. It was heartbreaking to see the girl she'd grown to love get snatched away from her though, all because of that girl's stupid decision. I really like Regine. Even though they gave her that silly conflict, I like her one-liners. Camille was such a nice character. Not, uh, she's mean, but she's hardworking and talented. I like how she humbled herself and admitted her faults. What I don't like is her changing a complete 180 at the conflict. Louis, who oh boy, I really, really love this character. It brings me back to those teachers who are really strict. I enjoy having teachers like that. He's strict but also kind in his own way. He looks at talent and doesn't care about the little things surrounding a person. He just felt like a really 
real character, and I love the roasts in class. Reminds me of my school back in the good old days where teachers can discipline students without parents treating like their kid just gets smacked with a baseball bat in the balls. Oh, and also for the best character, the mailman. I respect this guy. <laughs> Now we're diving down the story. I love Felice's story. It was so inspiring to me and made me feel like I want to work hard because she's so passionate about something we all thought she couldn't do. But here she is. That part of the movie was so magical, but it kind of got dragged down because of Victor. Now I'm not hating Victor for no reason. He's annoying. I'm sorry. <laughs> the whole love triangle thing was so dumb. No one likes love triangles anymore, guys. When will everyone learn that? Love triangles ruin everything. One word, guys. Mako. Rudolph should go too. He's annoying too. Take all the boys out, but keep the men. No, but seriously, the movie isn't great. But at the same time, it's great. It's weird. I enjoyed it a lot. It was a very lovable movie, and I suggest you give it a go. Wait, there's still time? Oh yeah, I actually thought of trying to revise the movie with some changes, so you can stick around if you want. Revision time with Rosmo. I suggest starting off the movie in the orphanage with just Felici, but gets letters from Victor who was already in Paris chasing his dream, and they could show the audience that she wants to go to Paris because her best friend Victor left the orphanage to follow his dream of being an inventor. So she also wants to go there to chase her dreams and meet Victor again. So she escapes the orphanage, finds Odette, and there she tells Odette about Victor, about how cool he is, how amazing he is, and all that stuff to show us what Felici thinks about Victor. How she looks up to him so we'd have this image of this cool guy, but we don't know Victor as himself yet. That way we only know how Felici sees Victor. Same old, same old, she joins the school as Camille, and Odette teaches her. And what I want to change is the conflict. Let's say instead of Rudolph buttering her up with compliments. Okay, so Camille still insults her pride, but Felicity's confidence was not broken because she has a strong stand on her confidence because of Victor's achievements. She feels like she can also achieve things no matter what. She instead gets a letter from Victor to meet up that evening, which makes sense for her to like disobey Odette because she's, she's never seen Victor for a long time. So if she wants to go there, this is a chance. You know what I'm saying? So at this point, Felicity has Camille's words at the back of her head, but she sets that aside, hoping meeting Victor could pump up her spirits again with his passionate stories about his goals and dreams. This is the part where we see Victor being the lame awkward boy he is. But we can see that Felici doesn't see him that way so that would have been cute, you know? That would have been cute. There and then she meets the person she's been chasing, admiring because he's also as passionate for his dream as she is, or so she thinks. There Victor tells her that he's not as great as he makes himself to be in the letters. That he thinks he won't be able to reach his dream and thinks of quitting. This shatters Felicity's confidence and also gets shocked about the person she idolizes to be not as she thought he was. She runs off, sleeps in the rooftop or anywhere else, the rooftop is really weird, and fails the audition. In the original, I felt satisfied when she failed because it was her fault and she could have prevented that. But if this was what happened, I could feel heartbreak for Felicity because she didn't ask to feel that way, things just happen at the worst timing. And then we go back to the usual thing that happened in the movie. She, she dances off, gets the role for the Nutcracker, and then invites the disappointed Victor to watch her dance so she can prove to him that dreams can come true and that he shouldn't give up. In this version, Regine doesn't go all ham and just tries to kill the kids, no. She's, she just goes to the, to the show. She's not late, but she keeps looking around the crowd if he's there, but he's not. She goes on stage and forces a smile. The soft Nutcracker music plays. But at a certain melody, she sees Victor watching her, eyes locked, and she feels inspired to dance, and she dances with emotion. There we see how proud Louis and Odette are, and instead of a kiss, which I thought was cute, we can instead let them hold hands. I don't know, small intimate moments like that just make it cuter for me at least, I don't know. Odette doesn't look to Louis in surprise, but keeps her gaze straight at the stage and squeezes his hands in reply. Isn't that cute? Boom! Movie over! To be honest, I felt so torn with this movie. I really hated the romance for Felici, but everything else I loved. The bad scenes didn't drag the movie down for me. The good scenes were just too wonderful for me to call this movie bad. I say this movie is really great, but some parts sucked. Yep, that's my final verdict, your honor. So yeah, 